Hey there. Today I am super excited to take a look at the characters that make up the Asgardian faction and how the gods stack up against our super smart and super powered mortals. My name is Nate and welcome to the Gamers Guild. For this video I'm going to hit the highlight reel for each character and how they should play, the strengths and weaknesses of the affiliation as a whole, some crisis cards these gods might enjoy playing around with, and what other characters would be either good to complement the Asgardians or others that want to partake of the leadership ability. And speaking of that, let's talk about Asgard's leadership ability. It is on Thor, and it is difficult to paraphrase this one, so word for word it says, at the start of each of your turns, one allied character may spend one power. If they do, remove one damage or one special condition from that character. Each allied character may use this leadership once per round. This is really great for a team of expensive characters for a few reasons. One is healing. Uh, healing is never going to be a bad thing. A power for a health is something I constantly do and I even bring a team tactic card for and patch up. It is something I always try to do if I get the chance when I'm playing the extremist consoles, uh, crisis objective, and two though is the much better thing where you remove status conditions instead of having to waste an action to shake them off. Where this becomes stupid good is if an opponent goes after uh, Thor that is already activated with Trip Up, for example. Uh, Thor will then get Stun and Stagger, and then on your next activation, even if it's not Thor's activation, Thor can spend a power to get rid of the Stun. The beginning of the next round, Thor will still get his full two power because of his Asgardian passive, and then when you go to activate Thor, you can use the leadership ability again to remove the Stagger and suddenly you have a fully functioning Thor ready to ruin somebody's day again. And since we have talked a little bit about him already, let's keep talking about the God of Thunder. Coming in at 5 threat, which rivals MODOK's cost, Thor certainly seems to bring the thunder. With a sturdy line of defensive stats, 14 total health, and a solid lineup of attacks, the only thing you want to make sure Thor is not doing is sitting on the back line holding an objective. And Thor can make sure that is not the case. His basic strike is 6 dice and has the usual power gain for damage dealt, but on a wild things get spicy because then Thor can throw any character size 4 or less. AKA everybody released so far and everybody announced so far. His hammer throw has a range of 5 which gives him a good bit of range, and he has the first area attack that we've seen on a standard character. In case you don't know how an area attack works, uh, anyone within range 2, in the case of Thor's God of Thunder attack, is hit by the attack similar to beam attacks, but you get to make the beam attack everywhere. Uh, it is an expensive one, but if you're getting to hit two or more enemies with it, it's usually worth it. Thor also has a throw that is up to size 4 on characters or terrain, which can be devastating. He can fly, and he has his very own version of charge. On the downside, his own version, it does cost one more power, and Thor has to make a strike instead of possibly upgrading his attack into something bigger. On the upside, as long as that strike deals damage, that target character gets staggered, which, you know, seems really good. The other thing that Thor has that all other Asgardians have is the fact that they are Asgardian. They all have a passive ability called Asgardian that lets them gain an additional power during a power phase. So unless they are stunned, that's a guaranteed two power a turn, which is really good ability and it makes sense for Thor, who's being threat five, and even as guardians that are threat four, but that would be silly to put on a three threat brawler that only wants to put out damage, right? Well, what do I know, because that's exactly what they did with Valkyrie. While she is a little bit more squishy than Thor, with threes across the board for her defense and 11 stamina total, but she does get the extra power as the rest of her Asgardian kin. Her strike is average, her big attack uh, in Dragonfane caused bleeding and possibly getting a follow-up strike seems great, but where she gets really nasty is her superpowers. The combination of Asgardian and Charge means that if it lines up, which it usually does, Valkyrie is going to get an attack before round one is over most of the time. Zemo and Killmonger can pull this off as well, but only if they're with Captain America and the Avengers. Her being able to do this unconditionally is fantastic. As well, she can throw any character or terrain feature size 2 or less, which is solid on a 3 threat character, but the cherry on top of this is Deadly Sunday is a warrior of legend. For 2 power and the next attack that Valkyrie makes for every crit or wild she rolls, 
you can change another one of your dice to a hit. I know the dice math in this game is a little weird, so I just rolled some dice to see how this would pan out with her Dragon Fang attack. Out of five rolls, the low I got was four and the high was eight hits, but had an average of about five and a half hits per roll. Not broken, but also not bad. Where this can get out of hand is with some additional support from things like One Two Punch, Wakanda's affiliation bonus for that reroll, or the new Team Tactic card that comes with Loki and Hela, Doomed Prophecy. The prophecy allows a character to add dice equal to its physical defense value to any physical attacks it makes until its next activation. The downside is that character no longer gets to roll defense dice for physical attacks until their next activation as well. What makes this particularly dangerous for the user is that this card has to be played at the beginning of the activation phase, not just before activating a character. So if your opponent has priority, it is not one you want to be keen on playing, but if Valkyrie or Thor is on their last leg and you have priority, have fun. And since we have now talked about the heroes of Asgard, let's talk about the much more sinister Hela. To be honest, I hardly know what to make of her at this point. On the front side, she has an average 6 health for her 4 threat, and 4s across her defense stat line, which is pretty good, and she is definitely a big damage dealer between her ability to add dice by sacrificing souls that she has captured throughout a battle, and a solid range of attacks that synergize with each other by causing bleed, or by benefiting from hitting somebody that's already bleeding. Uh, where she becomes really interesting though is her injured side. She goes down to 4 stamina, but picks up a new superpower with a cost of 0 named Queen of Hell. Here, as long as she has her maximum of 3 soul tokens, whenever she takes enough damage to be KO'd, she instead removes all damage and soul tokens from her card. So while she only has 4 health on her injured side, it can be 4 health multiple times before you actually get to bring her down. Where it can get even more troublesome to take her out is the team tactic card that comes with Thor and Valkyrie, Odin's Blessing. It requires the affiliation of Asgard, but for 3 power you can reduce the incoming amount of any source of damage to 1. That's right, to 1, not by 1. So whether it is a superpower, a dodge roll gone bad after Thor threw a size 4 dumpster truck at you, or Hulk is hitting you for 12 damage, by divine intervention Odin will save any one Asgardian that can pay the tribute of 3 power. And since they are all getting an extra power a turn, this card shouldn't be too hard to play. Rounding out the affiliation for now though is the not quite heroic and not always evil but the simply mischievous Loki. He's not quite as durable as his brother and sister with 10 total stamina and lower defenses with the exception of mystical. His attacks are also not too much to write home about damage dealing wise. His strike is on the low side of average for a 4 threat character. He does have a beam attack but it only rolls 4 dice and his big attack that costs 3 power only rolls 6 dice and it requires a double wild to trigger the special ability and on six dice double wild is not going to be happening very consistently. Don't get me wrong when it works it'll throw one heck of a wrench into any plans your opponent was making with some damage to boot. So if Loki isn't good at what the rest of the Asgardians do what does he do well? He is absolutely consistently and mind-numbingly annoying and it very well may be worth the 4 threat to have a Loki sized thorn in your opponent's side. Before he rolls, Loki can pay 2 power for I am a god, and then he can count blanks as successes during any attack and defense roll. For 3 he can use Trickster, after being targeted by an attack, to move sh advance short, and if Loki is no longer in range or out of sight now, the attack gets cancelled. Your opponent gets the action back, but not any of the power spent on that attack if any was spent. This can also get Loki into range of Captain America for a bodyguard save or other shenanigans that Loki seems to love. But what makes Loki more of a troll than a frost giant is his innate superpower god of mischief. This power causes enemy characters to have to spend one additional power for any active or reactive superpower used while within range 4 of Loki. This is going to be infuriating to play against, especially when Loki then gets injured and he gets some bold new text on this superpower. The new text adds that those characters within 4 don't get to roll extra dice from any criticals in their initial roll. Because of these things, Loki is going to have a target on his head pretty quickly, and on a quick serious note, against a new player coming into the game, please don't play with characters like Loki or MODOK. Both are great characters and the models and the rules are all fantastic and balanced. 
However, with their debuff effects of canceling wilds for MODOK or Loki taxing characters for superpowers, they're not going to create a fun first experience for anyone who's thinking about getting into the game. Now, don't get me wrong, I look forward to making some of my buddies pull out their own hair trying to deal with Loki, but not someone who's just trying to learn the game. All that being said, I now get to cover maybe my favorite thing that comes in either of these two expansions, get help. I mean, sibling rivalry, right, Atomic Mass Games? We are not doing get help. Get help! Please! My brother's dying! Get help! Help him! Oh, classic. Oh, I still hate it. It's humiliating. No, not for me, it's not. So, I present get help. Thor gets to toss Loki medium, which, worst case scenario, gives Thor a pseudo way to Gamma launch his adopted brother into better position. In the much more likely case, Thor gets to toss his brother into an enemy, and then that enemy gets to roll two less dodge dice, and if they take damage, they get staggered. And Loki doesn't take any collision damage from the throw. Uh, this is something that I will be doing many, many times before the year is over. But that covers all of our new Asgardian friends. As far as recommendations on what else to add to a roster with them, because they do not have any great objective players within their own ranks, but rather excel at dealing damage or just being a pain, I would recommend Alien Ship Crashes Downtown, Wakandan Herbs, and the Scrolls Infiltrate World's Leadership Extraction Objectives, because the less points your opponent is scoring, the better it is for you and your very punchy team. As for the secure objectives, I recommend Extremist 3.0, Gamma Wave Sweep Across the Nation, and Deadly Meteors Mutate Civilians. All of these crises either have several of the objective points in the middle of the board, or force people to gather at some of the central points so that your damage dealers can do work without having to worry too much about chasing down a Black Widow or a Koye. And speaking of great objective players, that is exactly what Asgard needs to help round out its roster of high-cost threats to be able to play the objective game if it is needed. Uh, the four I recommend are Black Widow, Zemo, Shuri, and Okoye. All of these characters are inexpensive threat-wise, and they each excel in objective play in their own way. The last two I'll throw in are Hulk and MODOK, because they would love to be under Thor's leadership ability to remove some of those pesky status conditions or just getting some health back. That is all I have for today. I am curious who you would add into your roster of Asgardians. Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.